Hey everyone, it's Emily. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. This will be a pretty fun video, I think, because this is breaking out of my comfort zone. I will gladly admit that I am not an expert when it comes to vintage or antique jigsaw puzzles. I have done one in the past. I really don't know where to go for all the research and information, but I do think it's cool whenever I stumble across one to just like pick it up. So I have two here that I want to look at today and do on camera, so that's what we're going to do. I also have several Springbok ones, which I know are popular here on YouTube, which maybe in the future I'll also show you on camera. But the two I have here today are these little guys that are smaller in size and a little bit older than the Springbok ones. I know those ones are usually around the 1960s, 1970s. These are quite a bit older. We're thinking 1930s. 1940s. So I'm excited to see what these look like. I have an idea of what this one will look like just because for one it is in color for the box so it's definitely more on the older side so probably the 1940s from what I gathered online. Um, but I have actually done this brand before and I have done it on my camera um, which is this one here which this one on the tag says 1930s but as you can see the box is pretty much in black and white and so this one was super fun and I really enjoyed it and I found these two at a local vintage shop recently for only three dollars a piece so I thought it was worth the risk to see what they look like see if they have all the pieces and I'm excited to see what they look like back like next to each other because one is from Perfect Picture Puzzle and one is from Big Ten. Both are around the same time frame and they look very similar so I wouldn't be surprised if they were actually the same brand. Again, not an expert at this. For my little bit of research, I do know that they do have paperboard versus cardboard. Cardboard is layered paper versus the pressed paper that these ones have. From my experience with the first one, I noticed that there weren't a ton of interlocking pieces, but it says it does have interlocking pieces, so we're just going to see how well that goes. I do know from my little brief history when I was at the puzzle convention, it did they did talk about the coloring at that time, and they really didn't have a, a ton of colors to choose from, so I wouldn't expect like super bright, vibrant puzzles, but we're just going to see what these look like. I thought it'd be fun to show these puzzles up close. I thought it'd just be a little fun experiment. So I'm here for it. Let's just get started. All right, so here are the two boxes side by side. As you can see, they're very, very similar. I would not be surprised if it's the same manufacturer or whatnot, but this one here is called Puzzled Puppies. And this one is from Big 10. And then this one is from Perfect Picture Puzzles. And it's called Ain't This a Shame. It's like this little dog in a bath. And they're close in puzzle piece size. This one says 275 pieces. And this one says over 250 pieces. So it looks like it's a little bit of variation there. As far as the size of the picture, um, this one here is 15 by 10 and this one's 10 by 13, so a little bit smaller. Um, so I'm just going to pick one and see what it looks like inside. So let's go over this one first, I guess. It's because I haven't done this brand yet, but I wish there was more information like the year or something like that. That would be really exciting. Uh, but it does look like the pieces are interlocking. This is number 10 versus the other one, which is number 1611. So this is, I don't know. I don't know what that gives me, but that's all the information I have on the box. So let's just open this up and see what we have. Okay. So inside the pieces are almost identical to the one that I have done before from Perfect Picture where it is the paperboard and it's somewhat thin pieces, but they are sturdy and they do have a blue backing. Um, printing looks just hazy, it looks just old, you know, um, not the brightest of colors. We have a lot of green and tan, but we'll just have to see how this goes. So let's just get started.
All right, so I am done with the puzzle and up close, it is so cute. Um, and it's funny when you're doing it because the, the coloring is not super bright, you know, it's an old puzzle and the printing I'm sure was a lot different back then. But when it's all together, it's definitely more vibrant than I was expecting. And it's really cute with all the little puppies. There's, it looks like four different puppies and it's just, was fun. Um, as you can see, and I'm sure you saw while I was doing it, that there are some interlocking pieces, but there's also areas like this where it's not. Um, so it takes a little bit of finagling where you have to move things around and put things back together, but it's the, the same exact experience that I had with the um, perfect picture puzzle that I did a while back. But I am going to put this one aside and we're going to move on to the next one, but it will be done tomorrow. Um, well, it'll be in just a second for you, but for me it's going to be tomorrow just because it's later at night. But all right, let's just get into the next one. I am back and it is actually a couple weeks later. I do still have this one still together, which was the puzzle from Perfect Picture Company called Ain't This a Shame. And this one was by far my favorite out of all of them that I've done from these antique vintage style of puzzles. It also though looks like it is the newest of all of them. So the picture is very bright and vibrant. There is a little bit more texture involved. And I really enjoyed this one. It is such a treat to do these type of older puzzles, just to try something different, but also just to have, you know, these puzzles are close to a hundred years old and to be able to still be able to do these and give them life is just, it's such a fun experience. So I definitely think these were worth the $3 that I paid for them. And you can find these on eBay for relatively inexpensive. I found um, similar ones that were on sale for like six to ten dollars online and if you were just wanting to try them out i do think they're a fun little experience this isn't really a history lesson here i just wanted to do the ones that i had and i had such a fun time doing them so i hope you enjoyed this video if you have done either of these brands please let me know down in the comments i think it'd be really fun to learn about or if you have other brands that are similar or older puzzle brands that you think i should be on the hunt for or keep an eye out for please let me know. I do also have a couple vintage spring box. They're not as old as these. Those are from the 60s, but I think it would be fun to do as well. So let me know if you'd be interested in that. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic day. Stay tuned for more videos to come and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.